Parabola. When you woke up this morning, did you purposely say, I'm going to confine myself to a box? Or do you just avoid putting any conscious thought into today? When you're busy going at it, literally or figuratively, do you ever find yourself pausing for a moment to realize what's going on? Or are you just reacting? When you hear the saying, may I have your attention, please, do you continue as you were? Or do you consider the information you're about to receive might actually be valuable? When I was growing up, my mother used to ask me to do things. And sometimes her reasoning was, because I said so. Looking back, I wish perhaps I took the time to pause, think, and consider the ramifications of my choices. Good Thursday to you. Today is Thursday, September 29th, 2016. This is episode number 14 of Pause, Think, Consider. Thank you for joining and listening in today. For those of you that are on Facebook and connected with us on Facebook, thank you for your comments, for your shares, for your likes, for your participation. If you are not connected with us on Facebook, please go to facebook.com slash pause.think.consider and join the conversation. Today's topic, as we've alluded to and been building up for about a week, The Leap of Faith. For more information on this topic, you can go to pausethinkconsider.com slash, all one word, Leap of Faith. I want to start today by giving a story. A story about when I was younger. And my family members, particularly my parents, And my grandparents thought that at some point in my life, I was going to give myself an ulcer. I was a worry wart and still to this day, very much think about things to the degree of keeping myself up at night or being unable to follow through and participate with what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. I get caught up in my thoughts and my emotions, and sometimes it can be paralyzing. And so I go back to when I was younger, and I believe it was in the third or fourth grade, if I remember correctly. And I went to go try out for the swim team. My mother was in attendance. She came and was there to watch. And I don't remember the exact circumstances of what went through my mind. I do remember my mother very patiently sitting and waiting, being understandably frustrated with me by the end of the entire experience. But I wanted desperately to participate in the swim team for whatever reason. I was a good swimmer. I'd taken swim lessons all throughout all throughout my youth. And I had run into a bit of an issue. A bit of an issue. Because I was a great swimmer. The higher levels of swimming... Remember, it was Portland Community College, the first time that I really experienced this, which leads into my story about trying out for the swim team. So in the normal regular pool, it was just a lap pool, but in the larger pool, the diving pool, if you will, the pool that went to depths of somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 feet, the other pool maybe around 12, felt comfortable being able to go to the bottom. But something about having a pool that deep is intimidating. 
on top of that. And I'm sure it was absolutely beautiful, the tile work that they had done. But in this pool that covered the entire bottom was this whale, this humpback or sperm whale, whatever type of whale, at the bottom of this pool. And so as a swimmer and doing the swimming lessons, maybe as a diver, it was cool. But for me, it was one of the scariest moments of my entire life. It was paralyzing. I went quite literally from someone who was a great swimmer, a strong swimmer, somebody that had the potential, if you will, to be a part of the swim team and be a really great swimmer. I'm not saying to like a Michael Phelps, but I was a good swimmer. I was not intimidated by it. I swam really well, fast, enjoyed it. And then and then I ran into Free Willy, if you will. And I literally couldn't swim in the pool. We were just wasn't even necessarily laps, but the teacher wasn't actually in the pool anymore. At the other levels, the smaller pool, more lap-based pool, instructors were typically in the pool with you. But in the deeper, you were a strong enough swimmer. You were able to swim without the need of your swim teacher in the pool with you. And so I went from that experience, not necessarily being coddled, but then thrown into the deep end, quite literally. And it's hard to describe, and I will link to it on the website. There's, I don't know that's necessary. It's, it's a type of phobia. I'm drawing a blank on it right now, but I will link to it on the website of the fear of things essentially being, and it's different than just having a fear of drowning, but having that fear of something on the bottom of the pool. I mean, there's a phobia out there for anything. And it was paralyzing to the point that I forgot how to swim. I literally could not swim. I went and I clutched the side of the pool the entire time. My grandparents used to take us to swim lessons because it was on the weekend. It was on Saturdays. And I can remember my grandparents not necessarily yelling per se, but just not understanding. Because they had seen me for years progress and go up from class to class to class and go from a strong, confident swimmer to almost as if I should have been in the toddler pool with my parent. I would not let go of the wall. We would go back and forth. The teacher was trying to get me and I essentially refused. I refused to the point that they had me get out. They had me get out and said, you're not going to participate. And I said, fine. I don't want to swim in that pool. They tried to tell me it was okay. It wasn't a big deal. It wasn't real. Just close your eyes. It was like looking into... Moby Dick's eyes himself. And it was painted in that manner. It was painted in that manner, which it literally looked like the whale was coming at you. Again, for some people, that might have been the coolest thing ever, diving off the high dive into a pool with the whale. Not for me. I was so intimidated they essentially moved me back to the same class, same level that I had just graduated from. That was the highest level that they had not in the deep pool with the whale. That was essentially the end of my swim lesson days. 
That was it. Because it didn't make sense, not only financially, but from an educational standpoint, for my parents to pay for lessons for me to go to a level that I, I simply was already graduated from. I'd already participated, already did it. So let's fast forward now to the main story. That was a, a build-up. The cliffhanger, if you will, to trying out for the swim team. The pool at Tigard High School is a lap pool. They also had a diving portion, not as deep as Portland Community College's. That went 25 feet. It was something like 16 or so at the deep end where the diving board was. And in the middle of the pool, they had the team logo. The tryout for the swim team, which essentially was swimming the width, not the entire length, the width of the pool. And you had to do each of the strokes, front stroke, back stroke, breast stroke, I'm Drawing a blank on the fourth. I didn't really watch the Olympics, so I'm drawing a blank in terms of I should know with it being an Olympic year what all the various strokes are. Well, butterfly, breast, front, back. There we go. So you essentially had to go down and back, and it was showing how you swam so that they could evaluate you and determine if you should be on the swim team. So it was a tryout. I don't know how many spots there were. I'm sure because this was middle school, they were quite generous in terms of who they took on. In fact, they might have taken everyone, for all I know. And I had this buddy of mine. We'll, we'll protect his name, if you will. But my buddy, Joey. Joey was an amazing swimmer. It always shocked me a little bit that he didn't go into the Olympics just because of how amazing of a swimmer he was. And he started so young. He was doing the swim team deal even younger than when I originally tried out. He was like the hot shot there. So I had my buddy, Joey, who everybody knew. Everybody loved. Everybody thought he was going to be an amazing state champion, which he was. When we got to high school, he, he was the Michael Phelps of our school. Just amazing swimmer. That was his passion, if you will. At least younger. Might have changed when he got older, but strong swimmer. And my buddy Joey was excited that... Here I was, we weren't the best of friends, but we were friends. We had played sports together. We would played soccer. I think we might have even played basketball, although I think basketball ran the same time as swimming or something like that. But Joey was excited because here was another, another friend of his. He had his friends from the swim team, but somebody outside of his normal swim team that he was friends with through not only school, but then also other sports. And here was somebody that had an interest and was going to join the swim team, so it was exciting for him. And we talked about it, I remember at school, for weeks about the tryout, the big tryout. He was already on, but he was excited for me to try out and to join the team. It was almost like it was a done deal. We, were, we weren't exactly picking out our matching speedos or anything to that degree, but... It was really exciting. I told, remember telling my mom how much I wanted to try out. I was excited because Joey did it. I wanted to participate. And then it was tryout day. I didn't have the Speedo like most of the kids did. I just had a pair of swim shorts. wasn't necessary for a tryout. If I needed to, I would 
go get one, but it wasn't necessary for a tryout. And we're all ready to go. Got my t-shirt, my swim trunks, dive in the pool. It's time to time to do the front stroke, just swim across. I put my head under, and there it is. Tony the Tiger, or I forget what the actual mascot's name of the Tiger Tigers are was, but there it was. It was almost the exact same thing as the whale in PCC. Almost the exact same thing. And I froze. I lost all sense of my ability to swim to the point you've probably seen like the lifeguards. They have that pole with almost kind of like this hook on it, if you will. I was floundering to the point that I don't know if it was a actual lifeguard or if it was just one of the swim team coaches that was watching. They had to grab me with the hook and pull me off to the side because I was essentially drowning myself, if you will. And I came out and I was bawling. I went to my mother. She asked me what the hell was wrong with me. I tried to tell her that it was the tiger. It was just like the whale. She told me I was being ridiculous. And thus, it felt like it was three hours. I hope for my mother's benefit it wasn't three hours. I hope it was maybe an hour and she was just being incredibly patient. And I wanted to leave. I wanted to go home. I didn't want to do it. In that moment, I decided, you know what, Mom? I don't want to do this. I don't want to join the swim team. I can't do this. I I cannot swim across that pool. I cannot do it. In fact, I, I won't do it. And I don't know how the dialogue exactly went along, but... It essentially got to the point where my mother said, we are not going home and we are not leaving until you swim across that pool. All you have to do is a down and back. You need to do it. You came out here. You wanted to do this so badly. Okay, you've decided you don't want to do it anymore. You need to do it. And so the waiting it out game began. So I went back to the locker room with Joey. And I just sat there, sobbing, trying to get a hold of my emotions. Joey was an amazing friend at the time. He ran out there and he was talking to the coaches. So I think I was supposed to swim each stroke. I don't know how many times I was supposed to do it. And so he went out there and he's negotiating with them. And he would come back and be like, hey, hey, Jesse, I, I got him. You only have to do front stroke and the back stroke. You don't have to do the, the breast and butterfly. Nah, Joey, I'm, I'm not doing it. And I can remember going out there and, and just pleading with my mother, please don't make me do this. Nope. You need to do it. You need to swim across that pool. You need to get over this. And it went on. To the point where my mother started to get very angry of you just need You've been here. We've been here for a very long time. It is time. I don't know if my head, I thought, well, if I can wait it out until the entire tryout is over, then then perhaps I won't have to do it. I don't know if that's what ultimately went through my head. But it was a long time. It could have even been, in all actuality, it could have been an hour of sitting in the locker room, coming back, looking at my mother, saying, let's go, let's do it, get it over with. My buddy Joey trying to talk to the coaches and coming back and coming back. and 
Eventually, I think it came down to I just had to go down and come back. That's all I had to do. I just had to make it down and back. That's all they wanted me to do. That's all my mother wanted me to do at that point. And so I bring up this concept of the leap of faith. Because here, in that moment, coming back to a horrific experience for me of the whale in the PCC pool. And being completely, I've never experienced that in my life up until that point of losing all ability of controlling my limbs and and everything else, essentially drowning myself, not necessarily on purpose, but just out of being out of fear, being unable to move, being paralyzed. So the moral of the story was eventually I jumped in the pool. I had to. I had to take the leap of faith. I knew how uncomfortable it was going to be. It was to the degree that I just, I had to do it. I may have closed my eyes when I did it and been crying essentially under the water while I was doing it. But I had to get over that fear. I still, there, I still, to this day, when I see something on the bottom of the pool, it just, just irks me. Bothers me. But I had to, I had to get over that. And all of that fear to get in that pool and to swim down and back in the middle, not clutching the side. That was the requirements. I had to swim down and back, front stroke, not clutching to the side of the pool. And then I was free and ready to go. I'm sure I got a tongue lashing of all tongue lashings from my mother, but I did it. And there were several other moments Several other stories that I could share. But that's the real first one in which I can remember having a situation of being paralyzed by fear. And unable to move forward. And then having to work up that courage and to move forward. And I've seen countless other people in my life in my circle, family members that have experienced and had similar situations, maybe to not to that great degree, maybe even more important. Swimming across a swimming pool is nothing. Nobody's nobody's lives are being affected by that. I suppose mine would be the only one if I actually drowned from the experience, but nobody's going to let that happen. But so just me getting out of my own, my own way, getting out of the emotions that are paralyzing me and not allowing me to actually swim like I had done for my entire life up until that point. And it became a mantra, if you will, of taking that leap, diving into that pool. Making that commitment to not let the fear paralyze you. I would encourage you. I would encourage you to, since we're pausing, thinking, and considering, I would encourage you to think about what is something in your life? What is something in your life that paralyzes you with fear. Is it a fear of public speaking? Is it perhaps 
I know this is one for me. Is it perhaps approaching and talking to a potential suitor? Is it going through interviews? Is it talking to management or your boss? Is it just being in public? Are you just awkward in public social situations? Whatever it may be, I challenge you to work on getting out of your comfort zone. I challenge you to take the leap of faith and then repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until it is no longer uncomfortable. The first time you go into that bar and you approach somebody you've never met before, it's fearful. There's another story I could share that my circle loves bringing up. I'll, I'll hold that for another time. But I know for a lot of people, it's very intimidating. And I'm uncomfortable with it. Still to this day, I am uncomfortable walking into what would be a networking situation. A networking situation in which you know no one and you essentially need to talk to people. So how can you get over this fear? What can you do in order to work yourself up to dive into the pool, figuratively speaking, and swim across and swim back and come through it? We're not talking about life, a, a situation in which your life is threatened. We're not talking about that. There's all sorts of things that we could do or we could attempt or we could try, and it's a huge roll of the dice. And a lot of people get an adrenaline rush from that, doing extreme sports or skydiving climbing Mount Everest or something extreme like that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a relatively controlled environment. Maybe you don't have those fears at all. Maybe you are cool as the other side of the pillow. So I would I would ask, what is it that you did to get to that point? That's not a born innate trait, in my personal opinion. Other people would disagree. You're just a born leader. You are born into a very charismatic, very open, very gregarious type of individual. But for most of us, we have some sort of fear. Potential, it's because we've been burned in the past. We had a poor experience in our childhood. It could be a number of of different reasons. So what can we do to get over this? I think first and most obviously, it's you have to do it. You have to work yourself up, and it is it is a buildup. It is probably one of the most euphoric experiences ever. Whether you fail or you succeed, just working your courage up to have the courage to ask the cute girl out or to have that conversation with the CEO or to go through that interview. It's euphoric to get over that hump, to cast aside that fear and to move forward. So first and foremost, you have to mentally get yourself in a place where you're going to do it. You see it in movies. It's always depicted in movies of high school kids trying to go ask the cute girl out, and then they do, and it changes their life forever. It's the same way in real life, though. 
that process of working yourself up to the point of being able to take that leap of faith, that's real. It's a real struggle. So you mentally have to prepare yourself for it. Next, and what I've always found is talking through the situation. You can't do everything alone. As independent as you may want to be, talking through the situation is going to be what's going to help you get over the hump. Mentally preparing yourself and then having that support system, whether it's your family, whether it's your partner, whether it's your kids, a friend, having that support system. And finally, the third and last thing, aside from mentally preparing yourself, leveraging another person to be your support system, the third and final thing to taking the leap of faith is imagining what it's like when it's over. When we gear ourselves up, it's often just trying to get to the edge of the cliff. But I often think we don't think about what it's going to be like afterwards, after it's over. And I think for a lot of people, they don't want to think about it because they always think negatively. They always think of themselves failing and this is going to be a horrible experience. But envisioning it going well, envisioning it being neutral, that's the third step. That is what is going to help you get over the hump, in my opinion, and believe taking that step, jumping into the pool, swimming across and swimming back. I know for myself in that moment, it was a lot of self-talk, a lot of buildup of, okay, I'm going to do this. Having my buddy Joey there, he was great, a support system, helping, coaching me along the whole way. And then I thought of getting across the pool and being done. That really, I wanted to just go home and what it would feel like to get the hell out of that pool and for my mother to quit glaring at me like she wanted to strangle me for forcing her to go through that experience from the other side of the bleachers. And it's almost like giving yourself an injection, if you will, an injection of testosterone in my case. Maybe it's an injection of testosterone for you or estrogen, whatever gets you more fired up. <laughs> But in thinking about what it was going to be like to be done and for my mother to be done, that was the change that made me get up from the bench in the locker room, walk out there, close my eyes. I'm not a religious individual, but in that moment, I'm sure I said a little prayer a little self-talk of just do it, and then I did it. And that's the procedure that I take every time I find myself running into one of those situations. Does everything work out great? No, it doesn't. But it usually doesn't feel as bad as I thought it was. Or maybe it was terrible, but you know what? It's over, and it's done. I don't have to worry about it anymore. So in recap, we talked extensively about how debilitating certain situations can be. My example, my story of trying out for the swim team and how I essentially lost the ability. I was paralyzed to the point of not being able to swim across the pool. And I know other individuals have these issues. Maybe not in swimming, but we are paralyzed in a phobia-esque situation that we're 
unable to move forward. We're not talking about life-threatening situations. We're talking about everyday situations. And then covering the three things in which we can do to move forward, to take that leap of faith that ultimately I took in the pool. The first one being mentally preparing yourself. Mentally preparing to take that leap of faith. Pumping yourself up, getting ready. Then having that other individual in my case, my buddy Joey, to encourage you, to further that excitement, to further pump you up, to get you to the next step, the third and final, in which you think about what it's like when it's all over, how that's going to feel. The euphoria that you experience as a result of accomplishing something that you have feared potentially your entire life. So I challenge you to look within your lives, to look within on a daily basis things that you're challenged with, that you're fearful of, that you hold yourself back from, and to go through that three-step process and take the leap of faith and see what happens. I want to thank everybody for listening in today. Please check out the website at pausethinkconsider.com slash all one word, leap of faith. And don't forget, please go on to Facebook, like us, comment, share, be a part of the conversation. And I look forward to talking to you all tomorrow on Pause, Think, Consider.